Have you ever met someone who just oozes charm? Like they walk into a room and you're instantly drawn to them. They have that smooth confidence, that thing that makes people listen. You think, wow, this person's got it all figured out. But then after spending a little more time with them, you start noticing cracks, little red flags, things that don't quite add up. It's almost like they're hiding something dark beneath that charm. Well, I had a friend like that once. Let's call him Dave. Now, Dave was the guy everyone wanted to be around. He always knew what to say to get people on his side. He could twist any situation to make himself look good. But as I got to know him, I started seeing the darker side, the manipulations, the lies, the ego. My goodness, the ego was on another level level. He'd push boundaries, get people to do things they'd never normally do. And somehow, somehow they'd walk away thinking it was their idea. The thing is, Dave wasn't some mastermind villain twirling his mustache. He was something worse. He was a guy who believed his own hype, thought he was above everyone else, and couldn't see the damage he was doing until it was too late. Doesn't that sound familiar? Now, imagine that level of manipulation, charm, and ego on a global scale. Enter Aleister Crowley, a man who, depending on who you ask, was either a misunderstood genius or the walking embodiment of pure evil. But here's the question, was Crowley a master of spiritual enlightenment, a fraud who conned his way into the history books, or just someone so deep into his own darkness that he couldn't tell which way was up anymore? Think about it. Have you ever met someone like that, someone who seemed like they had it all together, but underneath there was something much darker at play? And if so, how much power did they really have over you? Stick around because today we're digging deep into the life of Aleister Crawley, the man who called himself the B666. We're going to expose his teachings, his rise to fame, and whether he was truly the wickedest man in the world or just a brilliant manipulator who fooled us all. All that and more right here on the Pretty Fox Podcast. Welcome to Pretty Fox University, where men and women of value are inspired by God, beauty, wisdom, and empowerment. I'm your dean, founder, and host, Crystal J. Get free and exclusive content by joining the tribe. But first, you gotta give this video a thumbs up. Next, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to be informed each time a hot new topic drops. Last but not least, check out the description box for more info on how you can donate to the channel. Grab one of those three journals available down below and tune in every Every Monday for the hottest topics no one else wants to discuss. XOXO Crystal J. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Pretty Fox Podcast. I'm your host, Crystal J, where we dive into the deep, the weird, the spiritual, and the downright strange, always with a bit of wit and wisdom, of course. If you're new here, this is the place where we mix Christian insights with the complexities of today's world, whether it's about life, love, conspiracy theories, or some of the more unusual characters throughout history. And today we're talking about a guy who definitely falls into that unusual category, but with a twist. Have you ever heard of Alistair Crawley? Well, don't worry, you're about to. And trust me, by the end of this, you might wonder if you've encountered his influence within, without even knowing it. So let me just set the scene for you. Born in 1875, Alistair Crawley was one of those kids who probably would have gotten the side eye at every family gathering. You know the type. The one who asks way too many questions during Bible study and somehow manages to turn the topic into, well, something darker. Yeah, that was Crawley. But in all seriousness, this guy didn't just rebel. He went full on sprint into the opposite direction of his strict Christian upbringing. He was raised in a deeply religious household. His family were devout um, Plymouth Brethren, 
Crowley didn't just dip his toes into the waters of rebellion. He cannonballed straight into the deep end of mysticism, magic, and the occult. Now, here's where it gets juicy. This man wasn't just some rebellious teen teenager who threw on some eyeliner and decided to be different. No, no, no. Crowley became the face of modern occultism, founded a whole philosophy called Thelema, and declared, do as thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That sounds fun, does it? <laughs> but it, it, it earned him some lovely nicknames like the B666 and my personal favorite, the wickedest man in the world. And let's just say he was proud of that. Now let's talk about his character for a second. Crowley wasn't just rebellious, as I said, he was obsessed, obsessed with the supernatural, with unlocking hidden truths and with pushing boundaries, actually every boundary. He was both captivating and polarizing and he knew how to get people's attention, but that charm, it had a very dark undercurrent. He was like that one friend who takes a dare way too far, like Crowley bro, we get it. We get what you're into. You like pushing limits, but maybe don't summon demons at the dinner table type of stuff. <laughs> All jokes aside, this guy really wasn't playing. Crowley dove head first into the occult, practicing magic, engaging with spirits, and honestly, doing a lot of stuff that would make your average Christian skin crawl. But how did he go from church pews to casting spells in dark rooms? Well, buckle up, we're going to get into that. Crowley's spiritual journey is what makes him such a fascinating character. He wasn't just rejecting the Christian faith he grew up in. He was on a quest to create his own path, a path that involved embracing things most of us would run from, from mysticism to ritual magic to ancient Egyptian gods. Like he spun a wheel of religions and landed on all of the above. And trust me, this story only gets stranger from here. So here's the real question. The one that's going to guide our deep dive today. Was Alistair Crawley a misunderstood genius who was just a little too out there for his time? Or was he something much darker? And what does his legacy say about the people who still follow his teachings today? Now, I don't know about you, but when it comes when when it comes to someone who calls themselves the beast, I tend to think it's more than just a quirky name. So was Crowley simply ahead of his time or was he playing with forces he really shouldn't have? But before we dive deeper into today's topic, I just want to take a quick moment to invite you to join our growing community. If you're enjoying what you're hearing so far and you want to keep the conversation going, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps us reach more hearts and minds. I'd love to hear from you, especially if you've ever felt led by God to, you know, just dig deeper into the history of people who are making a significant impact on humanity today, whether it's positive or negative, uh, drop a comment below and share your experiences. Let's support each other. And if you haven't already hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our upcoming discussions, feel free also to share this video with anyone who might resonate with today's message. Together, we can spread love and encouragement. Also, if you feel led to support our mission, you can find the donation link in the description box below. Every little bit helps us create more uplifting content and reach more people with messages of faith and inspiration. Thank you so much for your support. Okay, so back to Crowley. <laughs> Let's dig into his journey. Imagine the son of strict Christian parents surrounded by religion all his life, deciding one day that it just wasn't enough. Crowley didn't just turn away from Christianity. He ran toward everything 
it stood against. It wasn't just a rejection. It was a complete overhaul of his belief system. I just want us to um, also jump into one of Crawley's most famous, or should I say infamous phrases, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Now, you've probably seen this quote floating around somewhere, maybe on a t-shirt or in a very questionable tattoo or some sort, right? But what does it actually mean? I mean, at first glance, it sounds like a rebellious teenager's dream come true. Do whatever you want. No rules, no limits, just chaos, <laughs> right? But, but hold up, because it's really not that simple. Crowley wasn't just telling people to go wild and forget all their responsibilities, although I'm sure some people interpreted it that way conveniently. No, what Crowley was really talking about was something deeper, something he called true will. That sounds fancy, right? Basically, Crowley believed that each one of us has a unique purpose, a higher calling, something that we're meant to discover and follow no matter what. Do as thou wilt wasn't about chasing every whim and desire that crossed your mind. It was about uncovering your true divine purpose and living that out no matter the cost. Sounds almost noble, doesn't it? But of course, there's always a twist. Crowley being Crowley, this true will philosophy gave people permission to shrug off societal expectations, conventional morality, and surprise, surprise, religious rules. Love is the law. Love under will is what he said. But it was always about that will, which you wanted, not what some church or government was telling you to do. It's what you want. Now, don't get me wrong. Discovering your true purpose is not wrong. That's, that's, that's a great thing, right? We all want to live with intention. But Crowley's version was like, find your divine purpose. And if it means flipping off society in the process, even better. And believe me, he did a lot of flipping off, okay? where I want to go through 10 of uh, Crowley's teachings, magic and, and, and 10 of his teachings. So with that whole do as that will philosophy is the foundation, Crowley built this entire system of beliefs and practices known as the Lema. And yeah, it, it just... It's just as intense as it sounds, but let me just break it down for you because there are about 10 teachings Crowley was obsessed with, and these were his pillars, his life's work. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Number one, true will. We've already uncovered this one a bit. Crowley believed everyone had a higher purpose or a true will that they had to follow. Now, that sounds all spiritual and enlightened, but in reality, it meant do whatever it takes to live your best life and don't let anything or anyone, especially morality, get in your way. And, and that's kind of like the original you do you, but with a more ritual magic and well demons. Number two, the lemma. The lemma, right? The whole guiding principle of the lemma is discovering and following that true will. It's like Crowley created his own self-help book, but with a lot more dark corners. Think of it like this. He basically said, find your life's purpose, follow it at all costs, and if people judge you for it, good. You're probably doing it right. That sounds charming, but it really it really isn't. And after the break, we'll get into how you can break free from these spiritual ties and truly live in the light of God. So you definitely want to stick around. I, I just want to um, plug that in there because that's something we're going to really look into. Number three is magic with a K. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, the, the, trust me, the K is important because we're not talking about pulling rabbits out of hats here. Crowley's version of magic with a K is the science and art of causing change in accordance with will. Translation, 
that's bending reality to match what you want. And yeah, that can include anything from meditation to actual rituals involving symbols, incantations, manifesting, spells, and other things Grammy definitely would not have approved of, right? Number four, the law of Thelema. Thelema. And remember how I said love is the law? Well, Crowley loved a good contradiction. In Thelema, love was key, but it wasn't the roman romantic, self-sacrificial -sac love that, say, Christianity teaches. It was love under will. So if love got in the way of your true will, then it wasn't the priority, okay? And that is what was being taught. Number five is a self-deification. Okay, so now this one's a doozy. Crowley believed that humans had divine potential and could become gods, not just enlightened, not just spiritually aware. He believed that they can become gods, like literally walking around acting divine gods. If this sounds like a power trip, well, you're not wrong. Imagine telling a guy like Crowley he could be a god. It's like handing your teenage brother the keys to a sports car and, ha and, and saying, listen, have fun, just don't crash it. Spoiler alert, he crashed, he crashed. Number six is rejection of morality. As you can guess, Crowley wasn't a fan of traditional morality. In fact, he found it stifling morality in his mind was something society used to control people, to keep them from their true will. So yeah, he threw that out the window faster than you can say conscience. Number seven was a sexual liberation. And of course, no Crowley doctrine would be complete without sexual liberation. He saw sexual expression as a key part of both personal freedom and magic itself. In his ritual, sex wasn't just sex. It was spiritual. It was magical, a way to tap into greater powers. Crowley took free love and dialed it up to a hundred long before the 16s ever got the 60s ever got here <laughs> number eight um the lamas cause um uh, cosmology now let's get into the gods crowley's cosmology includes deities like newt hadith and uh rahu kut straight out of egyptian mythology he wasn't just dabbling in the supernatural, he created a whole belief system where these gods represented the forces behind Thelema. Picture this, he's not just leading a moment, a movement, he's playing out an entire divine drama, okay? Number nine is initiation and hierarchies. Initiation was a huge part of Thelema and Crowley established secret orders like the, um, AA, which is the Astrum Argentum, meaning Silver Star, and the Auto Templi Arenthus, where followers could climb spiritual hierarchies through rituals and initiation processes. It's like Hogwarts, but way darker and with a lot more ego. Number 10, rejection of Christianity. La this is the last one, um, but definitely not the least, his open rejection of Christianity. Crowley didn't just reject Christian values. He actually mocked them. He wanted to tear down the influence of Christianity in modern society, which, you know, is a bold move when you're living in the early 1900s. Crowley didn't just rebel against the church. He actively tried to dismantle its grip on people. So there you have it. Crowley's top 10 teachings. Some people call him a genius. Some call him a fraud. And some, well, some call him the devil incarnate. I'll let you decide. 
Welcome to Pretty Fox University, where men and women of value are inspired by God, beauty, wisdom, and empowerment. Introducing our latest innovation, the Pretty Fox Journals. Whether you're jotting down notes from our episodes or tackling our episode assignments, we've got you covered with three specialized journals tailored to your preferences. Ladies, meet the pink journal crafted with elegance and sophistication. Its feminine charm makes note-taking a delightful experience perfect for capturing your thoughts and ideas in style. Gentlemen, say hello to the Teal Journal, designed with a touch of masculinity and class. Its sleek exterior and sturdy build ensure that your notes are kept safe and organized, empowering you to conquer every academic challenge with confidence. And for those of you who appreciate timeless elegance, we present the Gold Journal. With its luxurious design and universal appeal, it's the perfect companion for both men and women blending style with functionality seamlessly. Ready to elevate your note-taking game? Purchase your Pretty Fox journals through the link in the description box below. All right, friends, if you're enjoying this episode so far, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this podcast a like, and don't be shy. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's get into some deep territory now. Let's talk about the real meat of why people were and are still drawn to Crowley like moths to a flame. Because believe me, for someone branded as the wickedest man in the world, you would think no one would want to touch his ideas with a 10-foot pole. Yet here we are over a century later with his teachings still casting a shadow over culture, art, and spirituality. Number one, spiritual rebellion. Crowley was like the ultimate middle finger to conventional religion, to be honest with you. And we all know someone who's had that rebellious phase. Don't pretend like you didn't listen to, you know, music that wasn't good for you, <laughs> right? But seriously, Crowley's appeal comes from the fact that he pushed back. He pushed back hard against the rigid structures of Christianity or really any religion that demanded submission. His do as thou wilt mantra was like a battle cry for spiritual independence and People and for people frustrated with dogma, Crowley offered a way out, except that way out often led to some pretty dark stuff. Number two, pursuit of absolute freedom. Now, the idea of complete freedom, not by doing what you want, when you want, with no consequences, that sounds great, right? That that's a hard offer to refuse. And and Crowley tapped into that like a master salesman. It's not just about shaking off religion. It's about this intoxicating promise of you're in charge of your destiny. People, they really love this, but here's the catch. While it sounds liberating, it's basically handing you the keys to a car with no brakes. That's really what it's like. A lot of folks ended up a wreck, spiritually speaking, but we'll, we'll get into that. Number three, occult power. There's the whole magic thing. And yeah, Crowley spelled it with a K because apparently it's not like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. It's deeper, darker, more sinister. His followers, many of them crave power, control, and, and maybe a shortcut to knowledge that traditional religions weren't giving them. Who doesn't want to feel like they've got an edge on the universe, right? But let's be honest. If you've got to do a ritual at midnight with questionable ingredients just to feel powerful, you certainly are going down the wrong path. Number four, influence on counterculture. Crowley's fingerprints are all over 20th century counterculture. He's like the godfather of the anti-establishment vibe. Musicians, artists, even writers were fascinated by him. Heck, the Beatles even threw his face on the Sgt. Pepper's uh, Lonely Hearts Club Band album cover. Artists like David Bowie and Led Ze uh, Zeppelin's Jimmy Page were heavily influenced by Crowley's teachings. His ideas were this cocktail of rebellion, freedom, and taboo. And in a society eager to push boundaries, that cocktail was irresistible. 
But here's where things take a sharp turn. Because Crowley's so-called freedom, it, it really did come with a price. When you line his teachings up against the word of God, it's like oil and water. They just don't mix. Crowley promised liberation. But let's break down how that freedom stands in direct op opposition to God's truth. Number one, true will versus God's will. First off, Crowley, his entire philosophy of do as thou wilt, that's all about finding and doing your true will. It sounds empowering, right? But it's also wildly self-centered. In contrast, scripture tells us to follow God's will, not our own. Remember Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane? He said, not my will, but yours. And you can find that in Luke chapter 22, verses 42. That's real surrender. Crowley, he'd tell you to tear that page right out of the Bible. Okay? Number two, self-deification. Crowley straight up believed that humans had the potential to become gods. Yeah, you heard that right, gods. If your ego wasn't in, already inflated, inflated, that kind of thinking will definitely give you a serious boost. But let's, let's pump the brakes here for a second. Isaiah chapter 45 verses 5 reminds us, I am the Lord and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. Crowley's teachings practically shoved God off the throne and told you to take a seat, okay? Spoiler alert, that, that never ends well. Number three, magic and occultism. Now let's get into the spooky stuff. Crowley's magic, with a K, <laughs> is something that is, it's, anyway, let's, let's continue. According to the Bible, right, anything resembling sorcery, divination, contacting spirits, that's a big no. God calls that an abomination and he actually hates it, right? Leviticus chapter 19 verse 31 is crystal clear. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritists for you will be defiled by them. Crowley didn't just flirt with this. He dove in head first. And many of his followers, they still do the same today. This isn't just harmless fun, y'all. Okay? It's spiritually dangerous. Number four, rejection of morality. Crowley's disdain for morality. It's like tossing out the moral compass and pretending you'll still find your way home. The Bible says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And you can find that in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. But Crowley, he wasn't just fine with calling evil good. He put it on a pedestal and gave it a round of applause. Okay, that's how cold he was. Number five, sexual libertinism. And let's not forget Crowley's obsession with sexual liberation he viewed sex as a part of magical practices and that's magic with a k the bible though is pretty straightforward about sexual purity first corinthians chapter 6 and 18 says flee from sexual immorality crowley's teachings take you in the exact opposite direction where anything goes no limits no boundaries just chaos so what are we left with? Crowley's ideas, I guess, because they, are, they, they seem to offer a seductive kind of freedom, but that freedom is really just another kind of slavery. It pulls people further from God and deeper into deception. His teachings are a direct rebellion against everything the Word of God stands for. So here's the question I want you to think about. What's real freedom to you? Is it doing whatever you want or is it submitting your life to God's will and trusting him to lead you in the right direction? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I am grateful for this opportunity to come before you right now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for your word, which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lord, in a world full of deception and darkness, we stand firm in your truth. 
We ask for your guidance and your protection over every person listening to this episode right now, wherever they are. Father, we recognize that the enemy comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. And we see how he uses twisted philosophies like those of Aleister Crowley to lead people away from you. We renounce any influence of these teachings in our lives, our families, and our communities. We break every chain of deception, every lie that tells us we can be gods or that we can live without you, Lord. Lord, we reject the rebellion that Crowley promoted and we turn our hearts to you, the only true source of power and authority. We plead the blood of Jesus over our minds, over our hearts, over our spirits. We declare that no weapon formed against us and our families shall prosper. Every voice that rises in judgment against your people, Lord, we condemn it in the name of Jesus. You said that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who strengthens us, and we stand on that promise today. Father, I lift up those who have been led astray by the allure of false teaching, whether it's Crowley's doctrines or anything else that makes makes them disbelieve in you and takes them further from you. Open their eyes, Lord. Reveal yourself to them. Draw them back to your heart because your word says you leave the 99 to find the one. I pray for every listener struggling with confusion, searching for the truth in a world full of lies. Holy Spirit, move in their hearts right now. Move in mine. Fill us with the peace that surpasses all understanding and lead us into your perfect will for our lives. We ask for a hedge of protection protection over our family, over our friends, over our minds, over our jobs, over our properties, over our resources, and our spirits as we navigate this world filled with spiritual traps and temptations. Father, we put on the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the belt of truth, and the shoes of peace. Equip us to stand firm in this battle, knowing that victory is already won through Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, who made it possible for us to live free from the bondage of sin, death, and the occult. We thank you for being the one true God, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You alone are worthy of our worship, our devotion, and our obedience. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Whew. I don't know about you, but I felt that. Okay? If you've prayed that with me, Know that you've just declared war on the spiritual forces that keep, try to keep you in bondage and you've reaffirmed your commitment to the one true and living God. Keep seeking him, keep guarding your heart and trust that his will, not yours, will always lead us to true freedom. Now, before we wrap up, if this episode spoke to you today, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, share this message with someone who needs to hear it, and keep engaging with this community. You're not alone on this journey, and together we can stand strong against the spiritual darkness in this world. Until next time, stay grounded in the Word of God, stay bold in your faith, and remember, true freedom comes not from doing what we want, but surrendering to God's perfect will. Love you lots. XOXO Crystal Jade.